Welcome back to the Daily Dope. I'm your host, Brandon Strong. And, uh, well, here we go. Um, we, uh, I, I, this story, I, I couldn't let this one go by, all right? Because I've been, I've been doing Reefer Madness. It's part of my shtick. And what we see here with this situation is just, just appalling. <clears throat> it's a slap in the face to everybody who's ever looked into this subject matter enough to know that this the prohibition of cannabis in general um, was done in in a racist way. And I mean, if you don't want to say it's completely a, a war against minorities in, in America, um, we can all agree that it was at least propagandized as, you know, such. Uh, if you can't, you can't argue that, all right? And furthermore, you can't, believe the talking points of these propaganda spewing uh racists quite frankly so what's going on well in case you haven't heard yet um and that's kind of why i wasn't really thinking about doing this story at first but man maybe there's people that don't know about this so here it is this kansas republican lawmaker says black people can't handle marijuana because of their genetics i mean what century are we living in? What decade is this? Almost the second decade, the third, this will be the third decade already in the new century coming up. And we still have to deal with this fucking bullshit. <laughs> are you kidding me right now? And yeah, on Twitter, the, the, the white supremacist type people um, criticize me for criticizing this, acting like that, you know, genetics is an issue at hand here and that it's worth you know maybe we know what no just just shut up that's not what the fuck's going on this is just pure propaganda and this guy as sincere as i think he is about it is also misguided because he actually feel i actually get the feeling that he believes this shit i mean as sad as that is we are talking about kansas exact you know here and, I mean, if this was anywhere else, well, maybe not Alabama and a few other places, but in most civilized places where people are of sound mind, this guy wouldn't have made, a, made it through this, what he's going to say without getting stopped by somebody just straight up slapping him down with, like, what the fuck are you talking about kind of shit. So, anyway, let's read this. A Kansas State... Republican lawmaker reassured or resurrected a Jim Crow myth that African Americans are genetically predisposed to handle marijuana more poorly than other races during a speech over the weekend. As the Garden City Telegram reported, Rep, uh, State Rep Steve Alford, Republican, told an all white crowd that marijuana was criminalized during the Prohibition era in the 1930s primarily because of black marijuana use when at asked a question by a member of the local Democratic Party about potential economic boons for cannabis legalization. <clears throat> Quote, what you really need to do is go back in the 1930s. No, that's not what we want to do. But anyway, uh, when they outlawed all types of drugs in Kansas and across the United States, Alfred said. What was the reason why they did that? One reason why, I hate to say it, was that African Americans, they were basically users and they basically responded the worse off to those drugs just because their character makeup, their genetics, and that. Um, so we're going to get into exactly why cannabis was made illegal. But go ahead and remember this particular statement right here. We're going to get back to that and we're going to do a little, uh, we're going to be doing a little checking side by side. Well, here he is actually saying it. Where are the laws against drunk driving on that issue? I just read a paper in, in Kansas City where a person was high on marijuana, comes off, runs into another car, car wreck, killed a couple people. The other thing, too, what about... Uh... All right, the first thing he did there was he basically did what everybody else is, is doing right now because they got the memo, 
is he compared cannabis to alcohol when it comes to drunk driving. And I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of you guys over there on the right, especially trying to do this. And Democrats are just as guilty of doing this um, where they they always act like that's part of the compromise to legalizing marijuana is that they got to be like, oh, yeah, and we're going to make sure nobody's out there stone driving. All right, that's that's pretty fucking obvious and bad, but that's nothing compared to what he's about to do. Well, we've gone through on doing away with smoking in buildings on public and stuff like that. You know, what? You can walk up the sidewalk and the guy smoking marijuana in a car. That's, that smell took up my freedom. I want clean air. Um, hold on, dude. Your freedom doesn't involve clean air, clean of my marijuana smoke. All right? That... That's a bullshit, that's the most bullshit argument I've ever heard for for clean air. Clean air? You want clean air? Why don't you go talk to the carbon emitting fucking factories all around your town? Why don't you check into the the Exxon Mobil and see how clean their air is? Because you can't fucking be serious right now about complaining about weed smoke. But by the way, it's not legal to just blow smoke in the air anywhere that I've seen where marijuana is legalized. There's no outdoor smoking anywhere. And if there is, it's probably closely monitored and regulated in its own way. So what the fuck ever, dude. And by the way, I'll smoke weed and blow it right in your fucking fat face. So fuck you. Because, we gave, because there's a lot of people gave up smoking. So everyone else can have clean air. No, that's or, not why they know, gave up smoking. They gave up so. smoking because it's fucking deadly and it's goddamn a ripoff. It's worthless. There's no, no utility in paying fucking 10 bucks for a pack of cigarettes that are just going to kill you anyway. That's, they didn't quit smoking to give everybody else a break. Can I clarify that that would be against the law in Colorado, too? What's that? Yeah, you can do that, sir. But you should probably go ahead and interrupt this guy when he goes off on his uh, eugenics rant. I just want to clarify that that would be against the law in Colorado, too. Okay. See, he's not going to fucking answer to that. He don't care. He just wants to make his talking point, and he don't have an answer for that because he didn't, he didn't fucking go in the back room and you know, actually figure out, you know, what people are going to say when you spew stupid shit like this. All right, here he goes. The other thing, too, my wife is a magistrate judge. There you go. She says, basically, any way you say it, marijuana is an entry drug into hot nut. There he goes again. Marijuana is the gateway, huh? <laughs> Dude, like everybody in the fucking world has debunked that stupid fucking theory. Your wife is a judge? It's because she, she says it's a gateway drug because it's a gateway for kids to go into prison. It's a gateway for people to get stuck in rehab when they're 15 years old and then, you know, share a fucking room with a heroin addict. And the next thing you know what they're doing, heroin. Marijuana is not the gateway to nothing. All right. You, you and your criminal justice system that arrests people for marijuana is bad. It's the worst outcome you can have from smoking marijuana is getting arrested. And you know that. This guy doesn't give a shit, though. Here he goes. Fire drugs. What you really need to do is go back in the 30s and where they outlawed all type of, of drugs in, in Kansas across the United States. What was the reason why they did that? Because they're racist, like you. One of the reasons why, I hate to say it, it's the, the African Americans, they couldn't, they, they were basically users and they, were, and they uh, basically responded the worst of all those drugs just because their uh, character make them. They're, they're genetics and that. All right, where's the guy that was talking about Colorado or whatever? Uh, <laughs> there's no way you could let this guy say this shit. This is just unreasonable uh, line of reasoning that quite frankly is hard to believe it's almost as if he watched harry anslinger's speeches and believed every fucking word of it or something or read all the hearst publications about you know people killing people after they smoke weed and you know black people raping white women because they're when they smoke weed it makes them do that all right we're gonna get into that but what else and so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a complete reverse of people not remembering what's happened in the past. So basically, 
I'm against, you know, marijuana, uh, you know, all the way through to. Wow. <sighs> what a piece of shit. Hey, Kansas, if you fucking reelect this guy, you're a piece of shit. So this guy was on this committee here. I guess that's what he was talking at maybe, but whatever. Uh, and not anymore. He quit the committee after his comments about blacks and drugs. I wish uh, LePage would take a note out of this guy's playbook. Actually, this guy needs to just step right out of government. There's no fucking reason for you to continue pretending like you represent anything but bullshit. And your wife, she should no longer be a fucking magistrate or whatever the fuck she was. So a Kansas state legislator who suggested at a public forum that blacks are predisposed to abusing drugs has resigned from two committee leadership jobs. Republican state rep Steve Alford, whoever, you know, has to vote for this piece of shit, please don't do it next time. Vote for whoever else is available. And if no one else is available, why ain't this guy impeached right now? Oh, yeah, that's right, because it's Kansas. I forgot. Sorry. And Kansas, if you don't impeach them, then I'm going to keep thinking of you like that, you piece of shit. What is this? What, you guys have zero marijuana like legalization at all going on out there, don't you? Like, is there something wrong with Kansas? Is there a reason uh, why we don't have any legalization going on in Kansas? Tuesday, as chairman of the House Children and Seniors Committee and vice chairman of the Legislative Tax Task Force on Child Welfare. Alfred resigned from those positions a day after apologizing for remarks he made Saturday at a public meeting in Garden City. During the meeting, Alfred discussed uh, his opposition to legalizing any use of marijuana in reference to a time in the 1930s when it was outlawed. He said marijuana and other drugs were prohibited partly because blacks responded the worst to them and because of their character makeup, their genetics and that. <sighs> You you just don't look very uh, much like somebody that needs to have an opinion that anybody else gives two fucks about, dude. So I hope you watch this video somehow. Um, so we're going to go back into time here and really quick do what I usually do is take up another few minutes of your day. And I'm going to tell you why marijuana was made illegal in the first place and why the prohibition of marijuana got turned into a literal drug war in the 1970s. <laughs> And it was because of racist reasons once again. So, um, the man behind the marijuana ban for all the wrong result. Anyway, we all know Harry Anslinger with the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, which was the DEA of their time, is the guy that really drove the bus on this whole marijuana being illegal shit. In 1937 is when it happened when it actually became illegal. So this has been over 80 years we've been living under this racist law that we all know was made in racist way. So why, ethically speaking, why is it still a thing? Once you look at why this thing is a, is, is a law, you should be like, oh shit, that, we need to change that right now. Anslinger was appointed in 1930 just as the prohibition of alcohol was beginning to crumble. It was finally repealed in 1933 and remained in power uh, for 32 years. <laughs> See, no bureaucrat, and we, sh we got term limits on everybody else. How come bureaucrats get to fucking hang out and do this shit for as long as they want? I mean, it's obvious that after the first year of this guy, he just totally fucking should have been thrown in jail for what he was doing. Early on, he was on record essentially saying cannabis use was no big deal he called the idea that it made people mad or violent an absurd fallacy but when anslinger was put in charge of the federal bureau of narcotics he changed his position entirely quote from the moment he took charge of the bureau harry was aware of the weakness of his new position a war on narcotics alone cocaine and heroin outlawed in 1914 wasn't enough Arthur Johan Harry wrote in a book, Chasing the Scream, The First and Last Days of the War on Drugs. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we are still not seeing the last days of the war on drugs in America, and, you know, no book title will change that. They were used only by a tiny minority, and you couldn't keep an entire department alive on such small crumbs. He needed more. <laughs> Fueled by a handful of 1920s newspaper stories about crazed or violent episodes after marijuana use, Anslinger first claimed that the drug could 
cause psychosis and eventually insanity. See, we're, when we see these talking points back then, th- they're worded a little bit differently and they're, um, you know, charged with a little bit more racism and this and that. Uh, they're, that's designed to, you know, to kind of like get your attention. Um, but today we still see the same propaganda, only it's watered down and it's dog whistled. If it's racist stuff, it's just, it's just a little different than what you're seeing coming out of Harry Anslinger's fucking mouth. It's basically the same thing. And I mean, when you got this, this Alfred guy, he literally just said the same shit that that Anslinger said. (laughs) But, you know, all they do is they take psychosis and eventual insanity. They, they ramp that down and they say, oh, you could have psychotic episodes or you'll get really bad, severe anxiety or, you know, paranoid delusions and maybe even a schizophrenic episode or it, it, it's, you know, we've heard it all. We, we know what their, their evolution is. Their evolution is not to actually study cannabis and see what it actually does, but to try to scare you with these bullshit, uh, reefer madness talking points that quite frankly have been around for a hundred years. Now we're a hundred years deep in this shit and it's still the same bullshit as it always was. Yet we year after year, we fund the DEA and we continue to arrest our own citizens for a fucking plant. That's harmless. It's completely harmless. It's not for everybody. And even no matter how much you legalize it, everybody don't like it. Everybody won't smoke it. And that's, that's fine. We're not trying to make everybody smoke weed. It'd be nice if they did. We would have a lot less of this shit to deal with. In a radio address, he stated young people are, quote, slaves to narcotic, to this narcotic, continuing addiction until they deteriorate mentally, become insane, and turn to violent crime and murder. In particular, he latched onto the story of a young man named Victor Lakeda, who had hacked his family to death with an axe, supposedly while high on cannabis. It was discovered many years later, however, that Latika had a history of mental illness in his family, and there was no proof he ever used marijuana. (laughs) The problem was there was little scientific evidence that supported Ansinger's claims, and there still isn't to this day. Um, He contacted 30 scientists, according to Harry, and and 29 told uh, him cannabis was not a dangerous drug. But it was the theory of the single expert who agreed with him that he presented to the public. Cannabis was an evil that should be banned. And the press ran with this sensationalized version. Of course they did. The second component, because the corporate press is no different then than it is now. Just because we had like the Telecommunications Act narrow it down to just six corporations owning it, Back then, it was still basically the corporate press. Whoever had the most money had the biggest mouth. And you'll see more a little bit bit later on of who exactly that was specifically. The second component to Anslinger's strategy was racial. He claimed that black people and Latinos were primary users of marijuana, and it made them forget their place in the fabric of American society. He even went so far as to argue that jazz musicians were creating satanic music with all thanks to the influence of pot. This obsession eventually led to a sort of witch hunt against the legendary singer Billie Holiday, who struggled with heroin addiction. She lost her license to perform in New York car, uh, cabarets and continued to be dogged by law enforcement until her death. The insanity of racism is a thing to behold when you go into his archives, Harold, or Harry told CBS News. He claims that cannabis promotes interracial mixing, interracial relationships, the word marijuana itself is part of this approach, which was commonly known as cannabis until the early 1900s, was instead called marijuana, with a H, marijuana, a Spanish word more likely to be associated with Mexicans. Quote, he was able to do this because he was tapping into a very deep, the very deep anxieties in the culture that were not to do with drugs, and attaching them to this drug, Harry said. Essentially, in the 1930s America, it wasn't hard to use racist rhetoric to associate the supposed harms of cannabis with minorities and immigrants. And, uh, again, in some circles, and in places like fucking Alabama and Kansas, and Indiana, and other places where prohibition runs deep and racism is still pretty much right on the surface, in my opinion, um, yeah, they still use that same fucking rhetoric. You're a dirty, 
Mexican or your, you know, whatever black slur that you want to pick. And they, you know, they say that you're smoking weed. And these, these are far right wingers and usually they're really old and wrinkly, but you know, you're a communist and you're whatever, like I said, put a black name that they use on there and put the word lazy in front of Mexican when you're talking about weed. And it's just the same shit you hear, you've heard from the people in the 1920s and thirties talking about this shit. Same scare tactic apparently works on the same, um, demographic of the country that they think is the majority, the silent majority, as they always call themselves. They're the racist old white fucking people. All right. And they, they don't like marijuana. We know that. So they still demonize it and everybody that uses it. It's never going to end. So as to the nationwide attitude towards cannabis be, began to fall in line with Anslinger's, he testified before Congress in hearings for the Marijuana Tax Act. His testimony centered around the ideas that he had been pushing all along, including a provocative letter from a local newspaper editor in Colorado saying, I wish I could show you what a small marijuana cigarette can do to one of our degenerate Spanish-speaking residents. Oh, God. Yeah, so there he is. There he is when he got a little bit older. This is 1958. Here he is when he was a young, up-and-coming, you know, oppressor of the minorities. And what, whatever, man. You see how he changed his position right here. You know, he used to be like, oh, who cares about weed? Well, until they said, hey, we're paying you to care about weed. Here's another article about the same subject matter, racist roots of marijuana prohibition. This tells you a little bit more about who was involved and what was going on, so let's check some of these out. Here's a quote from, uh, you know, some 1920s article. Quote, a widow and her four children have been driven insane by eating the marijuana plant, according to doctors who say that there is no hope of saving the children's lives and that their mother will be insane for the rest of her life. This was the New York Times. And believe me, they're still just a corporate rag bag who basically just are a, um, a print machine for, you know, war machine propaganda to, con- to manufacture consent for all the illegal wars that America's involved with right now, including the drug war, which is also an illegal war that America is involved with right now. It's totally unconstitutional. Um, if you've seen Ron Paul talking about the Jeff Sessions statement, basically he was like, oh yeah, America knew that it, we, we couldn't constitutionally just go after drugs. So what we do, we invented like a tax and if you, you know, I don't know that that's not exactly true because if you, you weren't even allowed to attempt to try to pay the tax, you just tried to get a tax stamp and they put the handcuffs on you. It was a trap. But anyway, he was kind of right. Um, and that's this is the illegal war, the war on drugs in general, but especially marijuana. I don't know. I, I don't really see any reason to prohibit cocaine or crack in a, in, in a war against drugs any more than marijuana, though. You know, whether something's medicinal or not should have no bearing on whether somebody should be able to put it in their own body or not. If you want to talk about arresting people for sales, that's a whole other conversation. But meanwhile, you know, just arresting people for exercising freedom and choice is just ridiculous in a free society. All right, here's some some quotes from the uh, from Anslinger. There are 100,000 total marijuana smokers in the U.S., and most are Negroes, Hispanics, Filipinos, and entertainers. Their satanic music, jazz, and swing result from marijuana use. This marijuana causes white women to seek sexual relations with Negroes, entertainers, and any others. The primary reason to outlaw marijuana is its effect on the degenerate races. <laughs> so there's your, you know, uh, Representative Alford sounding quote. Marijuana is an addictive drug which produces in its users insanity, criminality, and death. Reefer makes darkies think they're as good as white men. This is how this is what he was saying before Congress to get the Marijuana Tax Act passed. This is the kind of shit that he was saying on record. Marijuana leads to pacifism and communist brainwashing. You smoke a joint and you're likely to kill your brother. Marijuana is the most violent causing drug in the history of mankind. <laughs> 
Harry Anslinger got some additional help from William Randolph Hearst, owner of a huge chain of newspapers. Hearst had lots of reasons to help. First, he hated Mexicans. Second, he had invested heavily in the timber industry to support his newspaper chain and didn't want to see the development of hemp paper in competition. Third, he had lost 800,000 acres. All right, go back to the number two here. If you're familiar with why he got so paranoid about the hemp paper industry stepping on his dick, it's because they just invented this thing called the hemp decorticator, which made taking the fiber out of the hemp plant like 1,000% easier than it used to be. So uh, cannabis or hemp was on the fucking precipice of becoming a billion-dollar industry in the 1930s. That's why... Uh, William Randolph Hearst started shitting his pants. So yeah, that was number two. Third, he had lost 800,000 acres of timberland to Pancho Villa and blamed Mexicans. That's important. Fourth, telling lurid lies about Mexicans and the devil marijuana weed causing violence sold newspapers, making him rich. The two were then supported by the DuPont Chemical Company and various pharmaceutical companies uh, DuPont was pissed because dynamite, they made, they made dynamite out of plastic, so they didn't want hemp to replace that. Anyway, various pharmaceutical companies in the effort to outlaw cannabis, pharmaceutical companies were on the, were on board with the idea because they could not standardize cannabis doses and people could grow it themselves. They knew how versatile the plant was in treating a wide range of medical conditions. And that meant potentially massive loss of profits. Hmm, I wonder why they're still the number one lobby that are fighting cannabis legalization on all fronts. <laughs> that might have something to do with it right there. It was ultimately the committee chairman who got the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 passed, uh, and the chairman decided that high school boys and girls buy the destructive weed without knowledge of its capacity of harm, and consciousness, uh, conscienceless dealers sell it to them with impunity. This is a national problem, and it must have national attention. The fatal marijuana cigarette must be recognized as a deadly drug, and American children must be protected against it. So we all know that all of that is bold-faced lies and propaganda with no science or empirical data to back any of that shit up. So why is marijuana illegal still? <clears throat> we just uncovered, like, the reason why they made it illegal being completely fucking horseshit, made-up bullshit and racist propaganda. How can we sit here and ethically still arrest anybody for cannabis, especially a black person or a Mexican person or somebody with Latino heritage? What's wrong with this fucking country is what I want to know. And if anybody out there still thinks this wasn't started with a racist fucking bunch of bullshit going on, you're, you're just a fucking idiot, man. You just don't get it. Here's the, fo the, I don't know, I might have read some of these already, but I'm just going to read this list again, and we're going to go ahead and see the 15 most ridiculous quotes about marijuana by Harry Anslinger. Marijuana is the most violent drug, you know, causing drug in history. Reefer makes darkies think there is as good as whites. All right, we read that one. We read that one. We read this one. Uh, the primary reason to outlaw marijuana is its effects on the degenerate races. What'd this guy say? The reason why we did that, one of the reasons why, I hate to say it, was the African Americans, they were ba basically users, and they basically responded the worst off to those drugs. Oh, how? By writing satanic swing and jazz music? I actually think that's some of the best jazz and swing music there is, if that's what it is. I know it's, you're full of shit, but you don't have any proof that marijuana did any of the other things that you said. And you're just saying this because this guy said it. No one knows when he places a marijuana cigarette to his lips whether he will become a joyous reveler in the musical haven, a mad insensate, or a calm philosopher, or a murderer. I think you're talking about alcohol there. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I think you're talking about alcohol there. And that's another thing that they're doing with propaganda these days is they're always, always, always just taking something that alcohol does to you and saying marijuana does it. <laughs> from driving drunk to beating up your spouse. It's all caused from smoking a marijuana. 
All right. So if the hideous monster Frankenstein came face to face with marijuana, he would drop dead of fright. Some people would fly into a delirious rage and they are temporarily irresponsible and may commit violent crimes. Other people will laugh un uncontrollably. It's impossible to say what the effect will be on any individual. And again, sounds like alcohol. Except for the weird laughing part. That sounds like nitrous. Marijuana leads to pacifism and communist brainwashing. Okay. Maybe it's because some of those ideas behind pacifism and communism are a little bit better than the bullshit we're witnessing with uh, non-pacifism, which is like dropping bombs on just about every country you can. And, you know, the opposite of communism, I guess, would be capitalism. I don't know. Capitalism's starting to look pretty fucking bad uh, with all the greed and shit. But anyway, it's dangerous to the mind and body and particularly dangerous to the criminal type because it releases all the inhibitions. Sounds like alcohol. The use of cannabis, whether smoked or ingested in various forms, undoubtedly gives rise to a form of addiction which has serious social consequences, abandonment of work, prostitution, uh, propensity to theft and crime disappearance of reproductive power this is all about alcohol and by the way it's not just any mistake that he's you know it's not just some coincidence that he's taken all the alcohol um facts and data that you could actually look at and be like yeah i mean you you can be reasonable by saying that well that's that's because back in the 1910s and 20s before alcohol prohibition this is the kind of propaganda you heard about alcohol and it wasn't really just all propaganda either some of it was true it came from the temperance movement which was basically a bunch of women that got the fuck beat out of them on a regular basis by a bunch of drunk asshole guys so there's a little bit of truth behind some of this propaganda but it's all about alcohol not cannabis and the reason they still do this shit with alcohol and comparing it to cannabis today is because they felt like it was effective. Just like they feel like 80 years of fucking arresting people for marijuana is effective. These fucking people don't get it. I don't think there's a such thing as not being able to cure an addict. Marijuana addicts must go to a federal narcotics farm. <laughs> wow. The addict pays anywhere from 10 to 25 cents per cigarette. It will be sold by the cigarette. In illicit traffic, the bulk price would be around 20 bucks per pound. Legitimately, the bulk is around $2 per pound. None of that made any sense. They found some marijuana growing in one of the prisons. We heard of that. There was a seizure made in the Colorado State Reformory for boys not long ago. Whatever. Um, so, one more final caveat to the racist... Um, invention of the drug war is Nixon. Um, yeah, so this guy, he, he hated the anti-war people, which they called hippies, and they hated blacks because they're fucking Republicans. Go figure. Um, so what exactly are we talking about here? Nixon's the one that started this thing we got going on now called the drug war. You know, he made the CSA happen, um, and he put cannabis right smack dab in the worst place you could in the CSA. And here's why. So Dave, Dan Baum from Harper's Magazine uh, refers to a quote from John Ehrlichman, who, serves a, who served as domestic uh, policy chief for President Richard Nixon when the administration declared its war on drugs in 1971. According to Baum, er, Ehrlichson, uh, Ehrlichman, my, sorry, said in 1994 that the drug war was a ploy to undermine Nixon's political opposition, meaning black people and the critics of the Vietnam War. At the time, I was writing a book about the politics of drug prohibition. I started to ask Ehrlichman, uh, Ehrlichman a series of earnest, wonky questions that he impatiently waved away. You want to know what this is really about? He asked with the bluntness of a man who, after public disgrace and the stench of federal prison, and after a stretch in federal prison, <laughs> he had little left to protect. The Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, 
We could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we, uh, did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. And there you have it. And here you have this. This is the problem right here. And this is a 2013 national survey. In some areas, this is like hardly any white and twice as many black. And this is just constantly, this is all illicit drugs. We can get into more details about just marijuana. And again, the white drops and the black increases. So anybody out there still has any doubt about how racist this fucking war on drugs is and this marijuana prohibition specifically targeting blacks, then you just you just got you just got a little lesson here. And if you have anything to counter that with, go ahead and, and put it in the comments or go and go talk to me on Twitter or something. Because quite frankly, man, this this narrative needs to be more in the forefront and thank you um steve alford for bringing it up because just like thank you jeff sessions for bringing it up um nobody really ever brings this shit up <laughs> we could have went another 10 years without talking about why did marijuana get a, a made illegal in the first place well this guy just told you you know it was because of a bunch of racist bullshit and that's how it sailed through congress because america like it or not, just is a fucking racist ass country. All right, that's all I got on this. If you like this video, subscribe. Um, lately, YouTube has just been beating the shit out of my subscribers, and I have no idea if I'm gonna actually reach a thousand in in this lifetime on this channel. So I don't know. Um, maybe find somebody that you know that or that likes to hear some marijuana updates and let them know about it um i'm i'm getting to be known on twitter as and and youtube as like the um the relentless spammer and i mean it's i i can't help it i got to spam my channel and my videos because fucking youtube ain't doing nothing to promote them and meanwhile they're cutting my subscribers out all the time and i'm also losing followers on twitter i've been trying to get to 250 on twitter for like the last six weeks <laughs> and it's always right at 248 no matter how many people follow me that week so i don't know that's all i got have a good one peace